the Rhodes podcast. All right, welcome back to Against the Ropes. Once again, here, Gio Garcia alongside with Christian Mosqueda. Hey. We have some special guests in the building here with us this evening. Right, mm. Christian? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, man. we do. Uh, excited for this one as well. Um, we have undefeated, undefeated, right from Pico Rivera. He goes by the moniker of El Moreno. You guys might have heard of him. El Moreno Angel Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, sir, welcome. Thank you. He's alongside father, president of Red Boxing Promotions, Mr. Marvin Rodriguez. Welcome. Hey. Hey. Thank so you. What's up? Welcome. How's it going? Welcome. Good. Doing good. good? Yeah, man. Just doing our thing in the gym, you know? Yeah. Had a train today? I'm going to train after this. Oh, oh dang. Oh, nice. Late nice. Nice. The only... I've, I don't feel like it's too. I mean, is it common to train late, late? Um, I guess it just depends. Uh, it just depends. Like, I feel like you can cut a little more weight when at night you just work oh. out and go to sleep and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, makes sense. Yeah, it just depends too where you're fighting, time differences and stuff. But mm-hmm. I mean, I'm up late at night anyway, so. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know why, but the only person I think of that like train late, <laughs> seeing the twenty four seven. Yeah. Oh. Floyd. Like, that's the person uh, I think oh, that I thought you were going to say Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. <laughs> 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 I mean, he has a fight coming up. You guys yeah. just had a fight, right? Yeah. In Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Tell me a little bit about that event and, and your fight. Yeah, well, um, it was cool, you know. It was my, my first time going to Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Um, the event, it was crazy. It was my first time fighting in front of so many people. I think it was, like, what, 5,000 people? Five or 6,000, yeah. Five or 6,000, you know. I was on national television and all across Costa Rica. Um it was just, it was something different for me, you know, and, you know, I've always fought here at the Pico Rivera Sports Arena, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it just felt different being away from not having my family there and my mm. close friends to just talk to me and keep my mind off of things, you know, it was more yeah. like, you know, we're just there getting ready, yeah. you know, for war, but it was cool, man, it was a beautiful experience, and uh, we're getting ready to head back, so. It's, yeah. a, it's nah. a different country, so you yeah. Have, in the back of your mind, you have like, how are they going to receive us? You mm. know. That's what my next question was going to be because how was how did they embrace you or if they did at all, right? Because over here you come into the ring on horses and everyone's cheering and manda and this and that, right? <laughs> and then you come to go to a foreign country where people might not even know you. So how how was that? It was cool. Um, the people there are very uh, they're very uh, loving, I guess. Mm. You know, they're really nice people. Um, you know, they, they received me um, well. You know, we came out with the uh, mariachi. It was probably something Sorry. really new for them mm. in Costa Rica, you know. Yeah. It was new. And they loved it. So nice. it was cool, man. They showed me love. And, um, uh, you know, that's that's my second home right there, you know. That's that's where that's where I fought, you know, outside of Pico Rivera. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool, man. Nice. Yeah, they came out with the mariachi. The crowd went wild. Yeah. Yeah, the crowd just, they lit up when they heard the mariachi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because they speak Spanish, but, but they're probably not used to that music, right? Yeah. They're not used to, like, yeah, that energy and stuff. Yeah, mariachi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different. Yeah. And we know that you fought in Pico Rivera. I think I saw your second or third fight, and you were the main event. And when you came out, even before the fight, even before I knew you, people were already talking about you. Oh, you got to see this kid. He's a part of uh, Pico Rivera. And... And even before I met you, like I knew that you were connected with the community. What are some things that you do in the community for the people that don't know? Um, you know, we uh, <coughs> we uh, we're always um, involved in. Um, we work with the food bank out of Montebello, okay. um, and you know, we just always trying to make sure our people are taken care of when mm-hmm. we can. You know, and uh, we actually have a really really big event coming up for Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. so that that's gonna be really cool, really fun, and. Uh, I mean, it's it's only right to be involved, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually have a foundation, El Moreno Foundation. Okay. Which we started with with that in mind to be able to to help give back to the community. Mm-hmm. And um, we just uh, recently opened up a gym in Montebello, mm-hmm. where you know where he trains. But we also started a program um, where we're linking up with high schools okay. that are having kids that are going through trouble. Mm-hmm. And uh, we recently just received our our first ten kids, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. And um, it's, it's been what two, three weeks already, and we mm-hmm. s- we're seeing a we're seeing an impact already. Yeah, yeah. You should see this uh, this crowd 
Yeah, I saw your story. There was like a group of like young men. Yeah. And you guys would seem like you guys were like in a circle, like talking. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, man. So what we do, you know, every Tuesday we have a we have a get together mm -hmm. um, after our workout, and we kind of just uh, hit a topic of. Uh, you know how to become a better person every day uh, how to deal with certain issues uh, certain problems that we go through every day mm -hmm. um, Just how to be how to handle it in the most mature way and the best way we can so we can stay out of trouble mm -hmm. You know and try to do what's right. So, um, you know, we have the kids from the high school, you know mm -hmm. they're, they, lo they love it, you know after the workout they get to hear something positive mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's pretty dope. Yeah, we're always surrounded by negativity all the time Yeah, you know everybody everything usually on social media is gonna be about something negative everything mm -hmm. on TV So the majority of it you're yeah. fed negativity So, you know, sometimes it's important to, to receive some a positive word, you know, it's like we're doing it as a mentorship mm -hmm. You know to, to teach kids uh, there's a better life. Yeah, you yeah. know how to deal with certain issues and, um, you know, some of these kids never heard anything like that. They're, like, yeah. amazed. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. like, whoa, I didn't <laughs> even, even thought about that, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, it's, it's working out great. We're yeah. actually seeing. Yeah, it seems like as like as men and especially as Latino men, we're not taught to, like, you know, talk about certain issues or we're taught to just keep it inside and, yeah. you know, to act tough. And, yeah, <laughs> just fig figure it out on your own. But sometimes it is healing just to, like, be able to, you know, be able to talk about certain issues because – your brother on the cross from you might be dealing with something similar. Maybe he already dealt dealt with something and yeah. you know was able to you know f you know find a find a good road. And so I think that's really good that you guys are doing that. Uh, you know, the more you can do that, the more you make it you know e more easier for other people to do it, especially with your platform as a fighter. Yeah, you know, you have you know people your age, you know, kids younger looking up to you. You know, they want to be like you, be that fighter. You know, that gets in the ring and does something that's difficult. Absolutely. You know, yeah, I yeah. think I think it also. It allows you um, to be human. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and because sometimes, for example, uh, like they can see him and people can think, oh, he has a perfect life. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes he'll open up a short story that will connect with someone. Or mm -hmm. sometimes when you're an athlete, you know, um, or you're, you're out there trying to build yourself, sometimes people try to act like everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not okay. Yeah. You know, and, and being in boxing, whether it's boxing, anything, you know, there's, there's more to it than just be to be physically strong, mm -hmm. a lot of his mental. I've talked to boxers who said that they weren't ready. To, physically, they were ready to get into the ring. Mentally, they weren't, and mm -hmm. they lost fights because of that. Oh, and in yeah. life, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, if you're not mentally prepared, you know, but if you are, it, that'll make the difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, that's kind of my, that's my main thing, um, yeah. is is um, reaching out to people, uh, youth, kids like mm -hmm. that, Cause I went through trouble myself before mm -hmm. I started boxing. That's how I found boxing, cause I was going through all kinds of trouble, just getting in trouble, hanging out with the wrong people, and um, and you know I uh, we went to the boxing gym, man. I just I didn't think I didn't think I didn't think uh, what I wanted to do with it. I kind of just went to the gym mm -hmm. on a daily basis so I could see what happens today, see what happens tomorrow, and the next day. Yeah. And I just stuck with it, man, and it changed. It really changed my life around. So, you know, I know that. Uh, that we can help uh, impact the, the guys that are going through it too, you know. Mm -hmm. so. And that's where actually the vision was born of, of having this mentorship program in the boxing gym. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you, it's it's funny, but, you know, that's something that we worked on the last couple of weeks to put together, you know, to help us. Janae and. She's and here too, ladies and gentlemen. You saw hey, her previously on hey. episode. All right. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So the thing is, the funny thing is this that. Um, I was always against boxing. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he went into boxing since he was twelve years old and I was okay. like I was like, There's no way you're gonna box, mm -hmm. you know. You know, um besides what I do as as a boxing promoter, I also work in real estate. I'm, I was thinking you're gonna be a real estate investor like I am, you know, yeah. and yeah. you're not gonna get banged up in a in a ring to get mm -hmm. paid. But um like he said, um, you know, at the age of fifteen, uh, I realized that, you know, he went through a situation. He was a tremendous baseball player. Mm -hmm. I even thought for a minute he was going to be a, a MLB player or something, okay. you know. Yeah. But, you know, when you get to high school, it's very different than travel ball, than mm -hmm. playing at the parks. You know, he had a little bit of tough time with grades, and they ended up cutting him from the baseball team. Mm -hmm. And at that point, like he said, he started hanging out with the wrong crowd, with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy for young people to get lost, yeah. you know. So uh, boxing is something that helped him get back on track, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I, I – Realized my mistake as a parent that I wanted him to live my dream or whatever I thought was better for him. Mm. While he had a passion for boxing all these all these years, I was like, nope, 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 nope. And you know, at the age of 15, I said, you know what? 
he got into some serious problem where it could have been life changing for mm -hmm. him, you know. But um, you know, it it actually was life changing, but in a positive way, because it you know when he got into the gym, it allowed him to focus, it allowed him to get back on track, and then all of a sudden, you know that that was uh, that passion just came out, mm -hmm. the, the the talent that he has for yeah. boxing came out. Mm -hmm. you know? Nice, nice. Yep. Yeah, you know, that's something we wanted to talk about because we're there at the Red Boxing Media uh, Workout, Media Day, uh, last time before your fight at Pico Rivera. Um, and, you know, Chris, you asked a question about what's your, um, what was it, what's your... Um, what's, uh, what's your reason for fighting or what's passion. your passion? passion? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you talked, you kind of mentioned that a little bit, right, about the troll past or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that if you know we always hear it from the person right oh i went through stuff but yeah, yeah, from, yeah. from your dad's point of view like what was going on through your mind when when you maybe saw him getting in trouble and, and and like you say you didn't even want him to box right yeah i didn't want him to box yeah but it to me it was just it was just you know i had my my idea of it you mm -hmm. know what i mean like like most parents do mm -hmm. or you know they some parents don't allow their kids to play football mm -hmm. you know so it's too tough you know you don't want to see your kids get hurt but you know, when we got to that point, I realized, like, okay, I need to do something. Yeah. You know, I need to get him back into a sport. Obviously, he can't play baseball. They cut him from the team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he kept insisting he, he was 12 years old. He wanted to do it. So my idea was, like, I'll get him into the gym. Yeah. He's going to get tired of it. <laughs> you know, he'll pass him up, and then, it, you know, we'll keep going from there. But um, actually, I saw the, the passion that he started develop developing for it mm -hmm. the, you know the sacrifice he started to do and the dedication when he's when i started seeing him get up at five in the morning i knew it was this was real okay. you know yeah. sometimes he was like take me <laughs> take me over to the gym at five in the morning all, yeah. all the way across la i was like no nah, you, gotta you didn't want to get up, huh? <laughs> I, didn't get up. <laughs> I was like i was like man <laughs> nah, I, was like, this <laughs> I was like this is real you know yeah i was like good thing we have uber now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um but you know what as, as, as i started to see him develop into what he started to become yeah then i started to really believe in it you know nice. and and now that i've seen the the change the change of direction mm -hmm. because it was tough for me you know yeah. like i i i taught him you know as, as a kid you know i try to teach him I, I tried to teach him you know the best morals the best way of life give mm -hmm. him advice but sometimes you know the, the influence the outside influence the friends yeah. the people you yeah. hang around you don't imagine how how much of an influence they have mm -hmm. and one second all of that could be forgotten yeah. and when i got a call that that my son was, you know, with det detained for something. That was a wake up call for me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what, I need to, I need to go ahead and 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 support him. And that's yeah. what I've done. And I've seen his life, you know, his life turn around. And and that's why, you know, like I said, we opened up uh, Morena Brothers Boxing Gym. Mm -hmm. You know, because we just said, you know, <laughs> if it changed his life and helped him, how many other people can we help? Yeah, yeah. You know, how many kids are out there could get the help, and some of them aren't getting the help because they don't have the money to pay for a gym or their parents mm -hmm. don't have the money to pay for a gym, you know, and uh, we're making it, we're making it uh, easy for them to join. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we're, we're actually, it's free to them. For, okay. for the kids that are cool. in this program, it's free to them. Nice. The only thing we're asking is for you to become a part of the program and to be willing to give back. Mm -hmm. You know, we get them involved in the same thing that we're doing, the community events, passing out food to the homeless, you know, passing out clothing, all of that. We're asking them to become a part of that. You know, you, mm -hmm. you're receiving something, you have to give it back. Yeah. You know? Yes. And anything that, w any community work we do, whether it's cleaning the streets up, whether whatever it is, the, all they have to do is just be ready to go. And, yes. um, and we've, seen, uh, we've seen the kids that are, they, they're, they're hungry. Yeah. yeah. They're looking for a mentor. You don't understand, mm -hmm. like, the, the energy that, that they bring out once they, some, somebody believes in them, yeah. somebody gives yeah. them an opportunity, it's powerful, man. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, because sometimes people in their own family, you know, they're not there for them. And when a stranger or somebody else outside of the exactly. family shows them that, they're like, exactly. Or here. sometimes their environment has always been negative, and yeah. that's all they know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, I can relate to that because I came from the same thing. You know, my environment was negative, and and that's I thought that that was supposed to be my life. Mm -hmm. You know, until I was 22, then you know I, I had a mentor in my life to turn my life around. So nice. so for us, this is kind of you know natural. You know, this is like part mm -hmm. of us and. We definitely, we definitely want to use boxing in this platform to give back and to help other people. Nice, nice. So why boxing, Moreno? Uh, yeah. <coughs> I mean, love to fight. It's more. fun. <laughs> I mean, as far as fighting, I mean, boxing is different from like fighting, fighting, you know, street fighting, street or whatever. Fighting. But it just it it brings a it's a disciplined sport, mm. and you know, it's 
it's it's really fun when yeah. especially when you, you have a challenge you have mm-hmm. a challenge it's uh it's you're, you're challenging yourself and you're like damn like you start to you know believe in yourself you start to mm-hmm. not only not only believe in yourself in boxing but in anything else you mm-hmm. know you're like dude if i could do boxing man i can i can do whatever i want yeah you know what i mean it's it's mostly all a mental thing so i mean i guess what i love about it is that it it gives me the confidence to to want to do great things you know and mm-hmm. instead of just being like oh no nah, that dream is too big for me i i, I can only dream of it like I, I can't actually do it or mm-hmm. you know so it's it's something that that pushes me to do yeah. whatever else we do outside of boxing nice you know? nice but i know when was the moment that the the pinpoint moment where you're like i'm a fighter i'm good at this like when was that moment do you remember like was it a fight a sparring like uh, something yeah i mean um I started boxing when I started boxing. I started training out in Westside, okay, um, in LA. Um, right there, I was still kind of just going to the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, I really still didn't really think much of myself in the mm-hmm. sport. Um, it wasn't until I got to uh, South Amani okay. where I trained um, right there with um, Jojo Diaz, mm. and I, I guess right there I started to, um, you know, really like think about my future in the sport and really want to, you know, go after it. So. Um, and then not only that, having JoJo there with motivation, mm-hmm. like, you know, I was like, oh, man, JoJo Diaz, you know, like, mm-hmm. so um, I guess in, in the, in, in I was around, I was my senior year of high school, I was finishing up high school, um, I was already talking about um, turning professional and mm-hmm. stuff, so I guess that's when I realized, I got to spar with JoJo, you know, okay. and at, at that time, I feel like I wasn't even kind of ready for that, mm-hmm. but I just, I did it, and it was tough, you know, and mm-hmm. And I, I guess after that sparring with JoJo, it was like, you know, dang, like, this guy put hands on me, but I'm still here <laughs> getting, you yeah. know, trying to get down and stuff. So mm. I guess that's where I learned where I can I can do it, you know. Nice. Yeah, shout nice. out to JoJo. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you about your first professional fight. I'm sure there was maybe some nerves, some anxiousness maybe. I mean, tell me about that fight, like going up the stairs, hearing your family. T- tell me about that experience. Yeah, so that, that, that fight, that was a crazy fight, man. Um, it was uh, definitely something new. Um, walking out to the to the ring is all kinds of emotions you don't mm-hmm. feel, and I don't feel in my my life outside of boxing. Like mm-hmm. I don't feel the feelings that you know. Walking out to that ring was like it was crazy, man. I don't even know how to explain it. It's yeah. just it's just like I guess um everybody has you know nervousness, fear, mm-hmm. and they all feel that, especially when your body goes into like adrenaline. Mm-hmm. You start to your senses like they're stronger yeah. and it's just about controlling your emotions if you can't control your emotions that's when you kind of lose yourself so mm-hmm. the toughest part is controlling your emotions while you're walking out to the ring and then like i don't know i've always said that now i've gotten used to the ring but mm-hmm. i said like my first couple fights everything looked big the ring looked big my <laughs> opponent looked like a <laughs> head like i couldn't see nothing outside it was weird yeah. you know and and I've gotten used to it now, and now everything looks normal, but <laughs> I remember standing across the ring, and I'm like, damn, this fool's head is huge, <laughs> his body looks huge. <laughs> like, you know, it's crazy. He, he used to tell me that <laughs> it felt like he was in a video game. It feels like a okay. video game. That's what, that's <laughs> what it feels <laughs> real. <laughs> it didn't feel real to me at first. Like, I don't know. I kind of just, it was weird. I don't know. I hey, like, boxing doesn't need a video game, right? Check. Yeah. 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 Hey, if they come up to you, you better say yes. Hey, you want to be in the video game? You better say yes. Uh-huh. Same question, Dad, for you. Him, him, come, him walking in. You know First what? Fight. First mean, fight. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, a lot of emotions. You're nervous because mm-hmm. you don't know what to expect. Yeah. You don't know how. You know, the, uh, you know, one of the things that we didn't know is how is he going to react once he got into the ring. You mm-hmm. know, we were there to the training, and that that gives you some type of confidence to say, okay, man, he trained like he's never be- before. You know, you see him two times, three times a day in the gym, mm-hmm. running, eating, doing what he has to do, but then. I've always been told that, you know, like sparring and, and, and working out is very different than when you yeah, actually walk fight. into the ring. I've been mm-hmm. told that by professionals. So I was like, well, we'll see what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. But that day he had so much support. Like the mm-hmm. majority of people were there mm-hmm. to support him. Like he had probably the biggest crowd of that night yeah. for his debut. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure that the cheering of the people, the family members, everybody, you know, gave him that strength to come out. And, and you know, he came out like – like if he was a world champ already, you mm-hmm. know, he came out, you know, with, with mm-hmm. the music and with, with his, his robe on and, you know, so I, I'm sure all of that mentally 
it also does something to you, you know. He had mm -hmm. the support, he had the people. It just felt like it was a championship fight for him. Yeah, nice. So, so why do you think, <coughs> you, why do you guys think that is, like, all that support? Because we have, we see fighters who can't even sell out a family picnic. But we have fighters like a Moreno, what, five and oh, three KOs, right? Mm -hmm. 19 years old who can put people in seats. Why do you guys think that is? Um, I guess, uh, you know, we've, We've been involved in so many like um, so many uh, different type of things in our life where we just we we happen to know a lot of people and you know it's not only that we know them you know we 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 give the best we give the we give our all to our mm -hmm. friends you know our, and people around us and you know it's, you know we we come we become like you know family we become really close with everyone we're we're very uh, we're very like loving people mm -hmm. you know like we give our best so. Um, I think you know that's why we're you know they come out and support mm -hmm. so much because we give that same energy yeah. back. Without, without the support, do you feel that pressure, as as well? Um yeah yeah, I do <laughs> because like it's like I, I don't want to let anybody down. Yeah, I mean, they're here for me, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's just you don't want to. I mean you just want everybody to to have a good time and then like you know when you win it's like they have more of a good time. I don't want to walk out and everybody like damn sorry man next time you know mm -hmm. like. Yeah. I gotta nope. keep everybody up. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say this to, um, you know, to all the upcoming fighters and, and all the boxers that are coming out. Like you said, there is a, a lot of people out there that can't, you know, bring people to the, you know, mm. sometimes their own family don't even want to support, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that for us, the, one of the big differences is, um, you know, it's, it's networking, it's working with people, mm -hmm. is also the attitude as, mm. as a fighter has everything to do with it because you could be a great fighter, but if you don't connect to the people, you know, if, if the people don't connect to you, then you won't have that support. You know, we saw that in Costa Rica. It was his first time out there. We didn't know anybody out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, that first, that first impression, that first impact, it, we could feel that we had the good mm -hmm. vibes on our side. We had the support of the people. Mm -hmm. They were cheering him on. It was like, it, it felt like he was a, a natural from there. Like, you know, if he was, a, he was homegrown or something from mm -hmm. there, that was his home. But see, the difference was what, what I saw made even a bigger impact was at the end when he got off the ring we were walking back to the locker room and people started asking for pictures mm -hmm. you know and there was actually a woman that came up to us and said you know what my son wanted to take a picture with him but he's all the way on the other side but he's on a wheelchair mm -hmm. and we were like you know what it doesn't matter we, it was a big crowd we had to go through people like it doesn't matter where we guys go through you know what we're here for the people mm -hmm. the problem is sometimes Athletes or people start to think that the people are there for you know to serve them or to help them. Mm -hmm. Where you know the more you understand that you're there to help or to serve the people or to to do something to give something in return, mm -hmm. then you're gonna see that that impact on people. We went back, we took that picture, and I mean it was just it was a, an amazing moment. But then the crowd, you can see the crowd was was into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know they give you that respect mm -hmm. that you come in with humbleness. They give you that respect that you don't think that. You know, you're coming in with a, a big attitude, a big ego. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's important from the beginning of your career to even when you become a superstar. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that that's one of the things that, you know, people, they, they see us everywhere. It's, uh, the boxing need to understand this. It's not just working out in the gym. It's, it's in the time when you go out in public. You know, we're mm -hmm. everywhere. And sometimes I have to motivate them and say, hey, you know what, we're going to go to this event. We're going to go to the other event. And sometimes he's tired. I know he's in the gym yeah. working hard and sometimes like that. I, I don't want to go. I was like, well, this is part of the business and you yeah. have to understand this is, you know, th the hard work is going to pay off at the end. Yeah, yeah. And we've been in a situation where, you know, like I said, he, he probably wasn't feeling it. And at the end, he'll walk out like, man, I'm so glad that I came, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because that, that built your fan base that helps to, to definitely get you there. Nice. You know? So El Moreno, Let's talk about the nickname and then the whole branding because you see it on your sweater, you see it on your hat. Oh, yeah. That as well. Janae over there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Janae is the one that makes it happen. Hey. Right here, so shout out okay, to Janae. Shout out right to there. Janae. Hey. Yeah, she's on top of it, man. Nice. So the but, nickname. Um, the nickname. Um, my my grandfather, my mom's uh, my mom's dad, uh, he's from Tepic, Nayarit, Mexico. And um, he wasn't a boxer or anything, but his nickname, they would call him El Moreno out there. Um, you know, my grandpa was, was someone who really supported me, like, a lot, man. And and he would always call me, ask me about my boxing, how I'm doing. And I was getting ready to, uh, I was getting ready to, to make my debut. And I was going to go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and so he can watch me fight. You know, I wanted to f- I wanted him to be there, you know, and um, you know he passed away a, like, what, like a month or two before I was gonna you know go out there and fight. So before his debut, yeah. Yeah. So I you know on the day of his funeral, I just I decided you know to inherit his nickname because uh, not only does it you know not only does it fit <laughs> me, but not only that, but you know it's just it was something special. Mm-hmm. You know, I I really wanted him to 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 be there and watch me fight. So. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to carry his name with me everywhere, you know, and I'll forever remember that. And even my last fight, I fought on his birthday, mm-hmm. October 12th. Wow. It was his birthday, you know, and um, my my uniform, I did a whole Nayarit, Mexico thing. I had his picture right here. And I don't know, I, you know, I put that thing on, and I felt, like, empowered, man. I you felt feel like, like you'd embar- yeah, embody the spirit. It's like crazy, that. it's crazy. I, I really felt, like, the energy. I was like, man, that's for my grandpa, you know. You know, that's, that's where my nickname comes from. Yeah. Any questions, Chris? Whew, it got emotional, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. Sometimes you just gotta take that deep breath, yeah. soak it in, you know? Yeah. Um. So, five and zero, oh, three KOs. You just fought in Costa Rica. What's What's next? Well, we're uh, we're looking at Costa Rica again. Um, nice. December hey. December twenty second. So twenty first. Twenty first. That's right. Twenty first. So we're getting ready for that, and uh, I'm excited, man. It's beautiful out there, nice. you know. 21st, that's a Friday, if I'm not mistaken? Saturday. 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 Yeah. Okay. Saturday. Perfect. Perfect. So, so why Costa Rica, Father, that you're in involved in the promotional stuff? Why? Well, um, you know, one of the things that, as president of Red Boxing, uh, one of the things we promised in the beginning of this year is to not only become a local promotion company, but mm-hmm. to become international. You're national and then international. That was, mm-hmm. that was our goal, but we actually jumped into international first. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, we have plans to, to do boxing events in New York and in Texas and, you know, areas where mm-hmm. boxing is popular. But um, when we made that declaration, um, you know, obviously people here and things started to fall into place. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, we teamed up with, with uh, a partner of ours that um, was going to be promoting in Mexico, Guadalajara, mm-hmm. Mexico. So we did our first international promotion in Guadalajara, nice. which he was oh. supposed to fight. That's actually my hometown. Hey. You know, he was mm-hmm. supposed to fight there, his first international debut. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, he got hurt. Uh, he hurt his, his hand a little bit after uh, his his fight mm-hmm. in June. So uh, the doctors basically didn't clear him to fight. Or they, mm-hmm. they advised him not to fight. So mm-hmm. it's not, you know, it was going to be, he fought in June, he was going to fight in July again. So oh, they said, soon, you know, yeah. it's just too soon, take some mm-hmm. time off. That was off. not the serious, but just... Just yeah. for precaution. For precaution. They didn't yeah. want to hurt and be out the whole year. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so that was our first international fight. And, um, <coughs> you know, I got a, uh, a call from, from another partner that is in Costa Rica. And they actually, they actually had, he, he has a fight. He manages a fighter out there who, mm-hmm. who became a world champion in August. Okay. She won, she won a, a world title. And they wanted actually to be signed to red boxing oh nice they see what we're doing for for our, our fighters mm-hmm. our boxers and where we're, where we're heading they believe in us and we believe in her and her talent so nice. we actually went out there to sign her it was oh. it was a big thing it was on it was on national news you know mm-hmm. um because in costa rica it, i guess it's a big thing for someone to get signed to an american company yeah, come yeah. out here and fight so mm-hmm. you know the, the whole country was excited about that you know the mayor of the city came out he was there in the sign he was nice. a witness it was a mm-hmm. it was a big thing mm-hmm. that's where they gave us the invitation to to have it more you know they've been keeping up with him out there you know there's some people that that met him uh in one of canelo's fights in december 2018 i believe mm-hmm. in new york yeah, and yeah. they've been following him since that nice. was his debut and they were following them. They were like, we want them over here. Yeah. So after this fight, they they said, we want them back December 21st. You nice. know, and so we're co-promoting out there, okay, you know, cool but the cool. people are, they're excited about yeah. having them out there, you know, and we're going to be probably taking more fighters from here out there to have that international uh, back you know, experience, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's very smart to like branch out, you know, and get a, uh, you know, fan bases and other demo- demographics. That's yeah. that's very, very smart. Absolutely. Yeah. Powerful. Earlier you talked about sparring uh, JoJo, and you mentioned earlier before the show a little bit about, you know, that you served as a sparring partner for another fighter. Can you tell me a l- little bit about about yeah. that? Yeah. Um, so uh, as I was getting ready for my last fight, uh, the one before Costa Rica, um, I got invited by Shakur Stevenson oh. to go out to Colorado mm-hmm. and uh, to go train out there and, and spar with him to help him get ready for his fight against Joet. Mm-hmm. So that that was an experience. That was a really great experience. You know, I, I appreciate him for that because 
I I learned so much in the little time I was out mm-hmm. there. You know, it's, this was like this was like next level sparring for me. Yeah. And um, you know, I had, they 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 showed me a lot of love. Him and his uh, grandfather, they were there like teaching me like, hey, you know, you can do this, do that, and you know, and, and it was really cool. You know, besides that, like he helped me get ready for my fight as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and training in Colorado, we're elevated, High we're altitude, about yeah. six thousand feet. You know, so I came back down here feeling good, not only about the air, but feeling that <laughs> that you know I got great sparring, and it's just that kind of just like. I was like, the dude I'm fighting is not better than Shakur. Like Shakur is one of the, he's gonna be one of the greatest in the sport. I can tell you that right now, man. Mm-hmm. That guy is really, he's bad, and, <laughs> you know. And it just gave me, con- you know, it gave me a, a confidence. So yeah. it was pretty cool. What's something that you're most impressed with with Shakur? Uh, he he's he don't get hit like mm-hmm. at all, you know. And it's it's crazy, man. Like I don't even know how to explain this guy. He would be sitting there, <laughs> put his hand on the rope, and somehow I'll miss. You know, mm-hmm. like I'll be like, shh, 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 and he's gone. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. But um, like 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 everyone says, Andre Ward says, you know, uh, he's got a little bit of everybody in him. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Mayweather, Andre Ward, all these, all the greatest fighters. You know, he he can do it all. Mm-hmm. So that's something that's very impressive about him. Yeah, and he catches. He caught his last fight right with uh, Joette, totally one sided. Yep, I stopped watching. All right, <laughs> <laughs> over the sixth round. <laughs> it was. It was, it it, was. You know, he was only getting hit like three times yeah. around, and there were probably like touches, like little mm-hmm. scratches, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's so fast, though, man. You can't mm-hmm. hit what you can't see. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. Definitely special. Olympian. Special. Got some good Olympian. sparring in. Yeah. Man. Yeah, something like that is something you can't get, right? Because you could be sparring other guys, but like not everybody gets a chance to, you know, like spar an Olympian, so. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now a world champion now. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. a, a world champion, so that's a, you know, am- amazing experience for him. An nice. amazing opportunity so so early in his career. Yeah, yeah. You know? Was there any, any words that Shakur told you out there uh, that stay with you now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably can't repeat it here. <laughs> <in the line. laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, no, he just told me I was one tough dude, you know, and, uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I earned his respect and, you know, he, he told me that, just, you know, just keep going. Yeah, so that was that was the radio radio version of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, we're he not did, censored. He don't worry. Yeah, he told him. He told him. Uh, you know, yeah, you you're one tough dude. And um, his grandfather, who actually like trained Shakur, was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Because we explained to him, you know, um, that he doesn't have a, a deep amateur background. Mm-hmm. He only had four amateur fights, mm-hmm. and then he jumped into the professional yeah. game. He's like, man, you're crazy. Like you you. Mm-hmm. He, he said, yeah. you really got mm-hmm. him, you know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. like, you really got something. Then, So we, we kind of explained to him that he didn't have a whole lot of experience, mm-hmm. and we, we were very thankful for this opportunity to, nice. to be able to, to learn it at this level. Mm-hmm. And he said, this is what he told me. He's like, look, he's like, could you imagine? He's like, he's, you know, he's, he's this good right now that he doesn't know anything and he doesn't have that experience. Mm-hmm. He's like, you could only imagine, he's like, with the right training, the right trainer, and the right people behind him, what he could become, mm. you know. So, you know, uh, that was that was encouraging, nice. very encouraging. Yeah, yeah. nice. So you're still a young, very young fighter. Who are some fighters that you admire, past or present? Um, definitely Shakur's, and you know, you know, on my list. Um, I I do I do love the way uh, the way Canelo fights. Mm. Um, that dude, it's his combinations are just brutal you know he'll throw like an eight punch combination and Mm -hmm. and now he's learning the style of more defense now so you see him moving but um you know those those guys are are are, you know i mean mayweather mayweather he's one of the greatest to do it but that's not really my style so Mm -hmm. i don't know if i'd be able to admire and look up to it because Mm -hmm. i I can't fight like that you know Mm -hmm. um but I love Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson hey. was an animal. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, yeah. I love that he was an animal. Like, mm-hmm. I, I see Mike Tyson, and it's like, I, I, I feel like I have that, uh, you know, that, that urge to just yeah. want to go in there. Like, seek and bang, destroy. You know? I, yeah. I admire him so much. I tell I tell Angel, hey, Mike Tyson fought 27 times in a year and a half, so get ready, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, I still got to do all the community stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's funny. Right. So what yeah. what is the goal for, for Moreno? How many fights a year would you like? Or are you just kind of going with it like 
we said some injuries come up here and there. And yeah. Like, well, the, the plan is to, you know, to try to keep him healthy, you know, yeah. and as long as he's healthy, um, you know, just depending on, you know, the toughness of the fights, because he's had five professional mm -hmm. fights. Um, I would say four out of those fights, um, if he had full control, they're pretty easy. Some of them, you know, first round knockouts. Mm -hmm. Some people say he, not even his hair got messed up during the fight, <laughs> you know, but, um, even though they were tough opponents, but you mm -hmm. know, it just uh, just his level of training made it so easy for him. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he had one opponent that he went the full distance. You know, two. it was, oh, yeah, two. Yeah, the the first guy I fought my pro, my pro debut. Mm -hmm. Right, but but he had full control of that fight. The 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 other fight I was mentioning, it was it was a battle. It was yeah. a, it was it was a battle one round after another. They were going at it. It was mm -hmm. a very tough opponent. It was someone a lot older, a lot stronger, who came out definitely, mm -hmm. you know, to win. Um, and, um, you know, that that fight there basically gave him, all, you know, a lot of experience that he needed. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't easy for him, but that type of fight, if he would run into another fight like that, I would say, you know what, take a little bit of time off to, mm -hmm. to recover from something like mm -hmm. that. From Like, that was definitely a fight to the end mm -hmm. but you know if he's going in there and and you know dominates these opponents like, like he has then you know what i tell him you be ready for the next month we just fought you know mm -hmm. two weeks ago and i told him december 21st get ready because you know right now you're young you can do this you can put in all the work put in all the work now all the hard work now so that later you can see the rewards of that nice you know? so nice. going into the ring with a horse is that legal <laughs> <laughs> Is that allowed? I mean, the commission is like, you do whatever you want. Man. I was going to say <laughs> that. I was going to answer that. You know, it is legal because uh, I asked before we before we did it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny because, it w you know, a lot of people thought it was planned. It wasn't even planned. Really? It wasn't even planned. I didn't even wow. know. He didn't even know. Until he didn't even know until he was out. about to walk out. What? Come that's on. How, what? That's how deep and it was. still hopped on the, the horse. The, the, the I was like, <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that. Like, <laughs> you got I gloves on. You're like, what, what <laughs> am I supposed to? <laughs> I, I get there, and, and the commission, they keep, they, my coach was there before me, and they kept asking him, oh, your, your fire's coming out on a horse? <laughs> and I didn't know they were asking him that until, like. I'm Which one? <laughs> 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 I put it on, like, he's putting on the gloves, and he's like, he's like. I don't know why the commission keeps asking me if you're coming out on the horse. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, what the heck? I was like, I was like, we've talked about it before. Like, it's a future plan, but I was yeah. like, it's not happening tonight, you yeah. know? <laughs> and then they asked me, and I was like, nah. <laughs> That's not, not me. Today, yeah. Not today. I, I told them, not today. <laughs> and see, what, yeah. what happened was um, <laughs> a friend of... A friend of mine, I invited him to the fight. I had been wanting to get him to the fight. And um, he was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to go. I was like, why not? Mm -hmm. He's like, I have a parade. You know, that day was, I think, the Dia de la Raza or something. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a parade in Whittier. He's like, I'm going to be taking my horses over to uh, okay. to the to the city of Whittier. We're going to do a parade and everything. I was like, well, 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 great, man. I mean, Pico Rivera is the perfect place for horses right yeah. after the parade. You shoot Pétalo. down over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like. Park your horse outside. <laughs> that's what I told him. But he was like, what? If, he was like, shoot. What, what if we use the horse? I was like, and I started joking. I was like, we could bring him out, you know, to do the walkout. Yeah. We started laughing. And he was like, hey, why not? I'm down to do it, yeah. you know? So I was like, man, I don't even know if the commission would allow that to, yeah. to happen. So yeah. the reason he didn't know is I didn't tell him anything. I didn't want to pump him up, make him think it was going to happen mm -hmm. until I talked to the commission. So the day of the fight, I talked to the commission and I said, listen, um, you know, I have a friend who's bringing a horse. He's trained to be a Can't people. leave it outside. So. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trained to, you know, to, to do parades and everything, mm -hmm. special type of horse. Can we bring him out? They said, hey, you know, as long wow. as everything goes okay and everything's uh, safe, yeah. go ahead, you know? Mm -hmm. So the problem was that when they gave me the okay, I forgot to tell him because I got <laughs> so busy with the show. We're in the middle of a show now. Yeah, now now yeah. I have to put on my promoter hat and I'm running back and forth, you know, yeah. taking care of it. I forgot to tell him. Uh -huh. So the, the commission kept telling him, hey, you coming out on a horse? He's like, I don't know. I, like, no. I didn't get he, that memo. He, uh. Yeah, he was like, no, no, no. So then when it was time for him to come up, I run back and I get the horse ready he, and I, I bring him out. I was like, hey, get ready. He was like, what? Did he get the wrong one in or what? <laughs> <laughs> But it was an amazing experience, though. It yeah. was it was an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just put a whole lot more pressure on me, though. Like, yeah, like I, now I, like, I gotta beat this whole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, well, okay, you're doing this big old thing. Now I really gotta show out and <laughs> and just dominate because yeah. if I don't, it's gonna look dumb. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, freaking walking a horse, yeah. you know. I mean, the fight only lasted like like a minute. Mm. It was supposed to be one of my toughest fights. Mm. You know, it was supposed to be probably 
my toughest fight uh, mm-hmm. according to to you know the, stats. The, the yeah. thing is, the opponent had uh, thirty three fights, professional yeah. fights. He mm-hmm. only had four. He yeah. was actually that was your fourth. He only had three. He was going on his fourth. Yeah. So according to the stats, he was he was favored. Mm-hmm. You know, he was favored highly. And I had a friend that uh, I had a friend that fought him, um, Striker. Mm. Um, Striker fought him before, and you know he went the distance with Striker. So I was yeah. like. He went to, the striker's really good, man. Mm-hmm. You know, he's cool. And, uh, and I was like, if you went the distance with him, you know, I'm probably going to end up going the distance. So in my head, I was like, we're going to end up going the distance. But, you know. It was a, a test for him. Yeah, it no, a a 33 plus fights, that's still experience. That's a lot of rounds. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, in there with uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of fighters that are, you know, you know, on the come up as well. So, like, he's. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's, no, it's no walk in the park. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. It was a test. Uh, you know, one of the things I tell him is, like, look, um, you're gonna you have to prove yourself and mm-hmm. you know you don't have time to waste if you're mm-hmm. gonna be you know you're you are already you you kind of were behind already when you start yeah. boxing so mm-hmm. now you got to pick up the pace and that's why we're willing to fight you know as many times as 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 she can as long as he stays healthy nice. you know nice. so man you're 19 years of age right yeah. what what do you consider for you yourself uh not to put too much pressure on you but 10 years from now a, a successful career in your eyes um like what do I s- what do I see <laughs> in ten years? Yeah. Um. Uh. You know. Everything I see, everything we've been working for. Mm-hmm. Um. Definitely. Um. To become a world champion, and mo- you know, maybe by ten years, you know, uh, uh, not not just a world champion, but of uh, many divisions or you know different titles and stuff. You know, that's the plan. Um. So I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Um. I'm getting ready to fight. I want to fight. You know, um, the best boxers out there. Just, just not only, not only just to, you know, because honestly, with me, like I'm not, I'm not worried about the paydays, or none of that. You know, it's more like, um, it's more the platform. You know, the bigger we grow, the more, you, you know, the more we'll be able to give, and 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 the more people will be able to, you know. But it's also uh, challenging myself, and and then just inspiring people who, because. Cause like me, I kind of always before, like I said, before I started boxing, I was kind of like, nah, I can't do that. Cause that's, I can only dream of it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I stayed in boxing because as a, as I started going, I was like, you know, this little by little becoming reality. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I I I know that that um you know doing doing that in the future is just it's gonna be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same question. Like, to <laughs> my. <laughs> Ten years from now, for me, the last day, I see him retired already mm. <laughs> as a world champion okay. in div- different divisions, you know. Okay. Um, you know, I still think that, you know, that he has a lot more to give than boxing. Mm. You know, this is just the beginning. And it, like he said, it's a platform to allow him to open up many, many doors. But, you know, um, I tell him I tell him this. I, I tell him there's so many different, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to work with with him is uh, maybe open some doors in, in uh, acting, you know, going out there and seeking other other things, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, obviously, um, you know, everybody tells me he's a good-looking kid. You know, he's he's in great shape. You know, he could be doing modeling, he could be doing acting, and 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 we all know, we all know, <coughs> we all know the long-term effects of boxing is, mm. is 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 not it's not good. So you know, I admire boxers who retire young. I think was it Andre Ward who decided to yeah, re- to retire young. young. You know what? I want power to him, and mm-hmm. I and I think that's that was a, an amazing move. That's a great move. And yeah, yeah. Uh, ten years from now, I definitely will see him hopefully retired as world champion in a couple of divisions. Yeah, you know, and him living his dream, but but also understanding there, there's more to life than yeah. than that. You know. I don't know, would you like to get into acting? Is that something that you you see yourself doing? Uh, damn, that's hard. Some <laughs> <laughs> like novelas. Novelas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'd be too. Uh, I laugh. Like I can't. <laughs> you know, I can't do that. Would but you do like a like a villain role or like the good guy role? Um, damn. You know, I would hate to be a villain because I know when I watch movies and there's like an annoying bad guy, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I hate that dude. And he comes out in another movie where he's a good person. Oh, I still hate that guy. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a villain, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. We never know. It could be mm-hmm. another Rocky movie or something. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be boxing. It could be a fit anyway. But you know, you'll never know till till you you try it. You know, but yeah. definitely open as many doors as you can. Yeah. What's what's something that people don't know about you? I mean, they know you as a as a boxer. What's something that you do other than boxing that people don't know about? 
um, I cut hair. <laughs> okay. Uh, I taught myself how to cut hair. I, I've been, I've probably been cutting hair for like three or four, four years now. I learned on YouTube. You know, okay. I was like, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm in high school. I had my friends come over. Yeah. I had a lot of my friends come over, and I, you know, I start practicing on their hair. Right. And yeah. I mean, besides that, um, I, I mean, I don't know. I kind of everybody kind of knows me because on Instagram I give a little yeah. bit about myself. What's in your playlist? Kind of music. Um. Oh man, I got I got a different. It depends how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this weather put some banda mese. Okay. You know, okay. Uh, um, more like um, I like corridos, like okay. uh, Natana Cano, Fuerza Regida. Um, you know, them type of music. It just uh, it, it pumps <coughs> me up. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. Spanish music. I don't really listen to rap anymore. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that was the old you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really listen to rap. What novelas do you watch? No, nah, okay. <laughs> I seen, hey, I seen one. one. <laughs> I seen one. A uh, one that I I really liked. It was called Mar de Amor. It was really good, man. It was mm -hmm. uh, what so channel? interesting. No, <laughs> we had the DVDs. I don't know what channel. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. okay. It was Dad's collection. <laughs> 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 it was oh, cool though. Right. So you'll be going to see Grupo Firme then in, in Pico? Um, dude, you know what? So that's what I'm. That's what I'm debating because mm. that day is Fuerza Regida in the Microsoft Theater. Ah, okay. Gru Grupo Firme is gonna be at Pico Rivera, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still debating. Uh, wait, wait, that's next week. I th yeah, I think so. Oh, that no, I wouldn't trust him. That is next I would week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I got all the info from my cousin. <laughs> it's the twenty. It's the twenty. Um, twenty seven. Seven. That, that is next week then, right? Yeah. Oh, then most likely. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm still debating. Yeah, I think you're right because my cousin's birthday is on twenty eighth, so that 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 would be the weekend that he. Oh would yeah. Go. Isn't yeah. that like Thanksgiving? Yeah, Thanksgiving is the 28th. Is, my yeah. sister's birthday is too on the 28th. 28th? Oh, nice. Yeah. Happy birthday. Shout out. Yeah, his on the 30th. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy early birthday. Yeah. yeah. Are you but allowed to eat? Huh? Are you allowed to eat? Um, <laughs> Next week, I'm already starting to cut down already. So yeah. I, if I go to any event, I won't be able to eat, you know, like. No pumpkin pie, no turkey, no. Nah. Mm -hmm. I, the good thing is I'm having my uh, friends giving this Friday. So oh, that's going to oh, be my smart. last, you know, little, yeah. little thing. And smart. Yeah, we just had right hook, right hook Roxy, and she she can't eat, right? Uh uh. Oh, yeah. dude, that's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst. I'm telling you, that's the worst thing about this mm. thing is just cutting the weight, dude. Right? What do you like to eat that you that you wouldn't eat like during camp? Uh, three patty burgers. <laughs> 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 that's my go-to meal right there from Wendy's. Just hey, three hey, patty burgers. Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you tried the Popeye's chicken sandwich? Mm. No, I haven't. You know what? I'm gonna go maybe tomorrow. Hey. I'm gonna go try that. You gotta go for a camp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go and start like getting down with the employees or something. Warming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy grabbed an old lady and threw her on the floor. He oh, body slammed her. Yeah. He yeah. should be racist, you know. But uh, he, dude, it's an old lady. He grabbed yeah. her and just bah, threw her on the floor, man. Dang. There's something in that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, <there's laughs> something. There's something. I haven't tried it. I don't want to deal I with that drama. No. <laughs> crazy. It was recently. I think it was um last week. Uh, Two people started fighting over a sandwich, like saying that some other sandwich was better than the Popeye sandwich, <laughs> and they got down for it. You know, it's that's just what I'll, I'll stick with Chick Fil A. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't really. Go to Pollo Loco. I don't really go to Pollo Loco. Chick Fil A is bomb, but I don't yeah. really go to like. I don't like going to the places that are hyped. Yeah. Because like sometimes they're overhyped, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to go over there, man. I just stick to what I know and eat, you know, yeah. Chick Fil A or whatever. But I heard that Taco Bell's coming with one now. With uh, what? With a chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich. What? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Taco <laughs> Bell? No. Ugh, Taco Bell. <laughs> 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 he just kicked things out. Hey, be quiet. You, you never know. They may want to sponsor. For real. Taco Bell. Nah, only great idea. I do go to Taco Bell for their chicken and quesadilla, though. Oh, oh, that is fire. Agree. That one's bomb. Mm -hmm. There you go. But Fixed it up. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's because I don't really like hard shell tacos. Okay. Yeah, they're kind of weird. I don't eat hard shell tacos. But the chicken is the fire. If you had to pick one fast food place to get sponsored by, who would it be? Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh, yeah. man. They have Sh the best burgers, man. Wendy's is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they got yeah. spicy nuggets. I agree with that. They got the grape high C food, uh, high C grape. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a Wendy's. Wendy's bomb. I like In-N-Out. In-N-Out in -N -Out is good, but they don't have barbecue sauce, so that's why I don't go to in uh, I like to eat with my barbecue sauce. So yeah. So <laughs> Wendy's. Chick fil A is bomb though. Chick -fil -A I just hate when I'm craving a Sunday and they're closed. I'm like, yeah. these guys are in church. Kanye <laughs> 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 song. Yeah, my Chick fil A. <laughs> 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 
Nice. So you guys have any other announcements? Any? I know you guys stay busy. Yeah, definitely. Um, regarding Moreno, uh, like I said, we're going to be fighting December 21, um, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. We're uh, working on a, on a show here in either Pico Rivera or Loco around here uh, for January. The end of January is what we're shooting for. So we're going to be finalizing that hopefully in the next week. Um, so we're going to have a local show. Um, you know, as, uh, as far as red boxing, we're having a, a show in the Philippines, I believe this weekend. Mm -hmm. We're having a fight out in the Philippines too, um, regarding red boxing. And we're going to do a show in Costa Rica, like I said, uh, as part of the promotion of red boxing. And um, I would say this, uh, um, I would, <coughs> I, I would definitely keep an eye out on red boxing because we're working on something right mm -hmm. now that's going to be big for, for next year, 2020. Um, you know, we're having a lot of people approach us about, about you know, doing, putting some great fights together and doing some great things. So, um, you know, we're working on something big. Like I, s I can't, I can't say because then you would have to delete it. <laughs> 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 I can't say it now, but um, I think we may know. Yeah, <laughs> you, you may have an idea. Well, you know, hope hopefully, uh, summer 2020, we're shooting for something that that's gonna be big. So, you know, just don't sleep on us. Keep your eyes open. You know. Um, we're definitely out here to, to, we're not here playing. We're here to, mm -hmm. to, to change change history. We're making some moves. And we're here also to, you know, to build fighters and, and to bring a new generation and to bring new life, new energy to the sport. Nice. You know, I think that's what we're doing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Morena, are, are there any, do you have any close friendships with other boxers either in the same stable or outside? Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a few friends uh, in the boxing uh you know, someone told me not to really make friends because one day you might have to fight them. Mm. But, I mean, nah, these guys are cool. You know, they <laughs> they always want to participate in our events and stuff. Nice. So, yeah, it's, I have a few friends. Only a couple. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true because uh, there's a, what, who is it, Terrence Crawford that we want to see him fight, like Porter, and they're, oh, we won't fight because we're friends or something. Mm. Man. Well, yeah. if that check is big enough, I bet you they'll right. fight. <laughs> <laughs> they can hug it up after the fight. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, like, I'm sure they'll spar each other. Mm -hmm. You know, sparring is, so if they'll spar each other, I don't see why they, they wouldn't fight, you mm -hmm. know. They're going to get paid, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure, like, if Sean Porter say, hey, man, Terrence can come help me out for a camp, you know, and he's sparring. Mm -hmm. You know, why yeah. not get paid for it? Just, you, you sparring, you fighting, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think it will happen. Cause like even Shakur, um, Shakur, I seen a video. He was saying, uh, he's really good friends with Javante Davis. Mm -hmm. But they asked him like, would you fight him? He said, yeah. He's like, that's my boy. But at the end of the day, this is business. You yeah. Know? yeah. The sport is business. You know, it's entertainment and stuff. So. Yeah. Nice. Talking about that, I want to get your take on this, cause the KSI Logan Paul fight YouTuber dudes. Yeah. What, what do you think about that? Hey, uh, I think whoever put that together is a genius, mm. you know? Uh, uh, people weren't too happy with it, but it, it just depends what side <coughs> you're on, mm. you know? From the business side, it, it was, a, it was a, a great idea because yeah. at the end of the day, um, you know, people uh, or companies make money off, off what people see or what they want to see, yeah. you know? So, you know, people had asked me about that before. I said, hey, you know what? That's an, an amazing idea because mm -hmm. it's a moneymaker, mm -hmm. you know? Obviously, you know, it, it, you know, some people could take it as an offense to the sport. Some people could say, you know what, that's not real. You know, there weren't real boxers, professional boxers. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? I, I tell you this, uh, a lot of people saw the fight. Yeah. So obviously it does something. And it's always funny because it's always people, you know, that will, will, will <coughs> not like something to be, you know, see as a negative thing. But then they'll be the first ones to support yeah. it and see it, you know. <laughs> and, and everybody has, um, you know, the right to their own opinion, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, from a business perspective, I'm going to tell you as a promoter, I, I would have left for them to fight on, on my card, right. yeah. you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it would have made sense. It would have made yeah. money. And, and um, you know, just some boxers will take it as a defense because, of, like, we're, we're not even the main event. We're, we're better fighters and yeah. we're second. But at the end of the day, and this is what I tell young fighters all the time. This was this is what I'm I'm preaching to these kids like you know what at the, the end of the day it doesn't matter how good you are it really doesn't mm -hmm. it's gonna matter how well you could brand yourself how well you could build yourself up at the end of the day that's what's gonna really get you paid mm -hmm. because you know um, for example I just saw something amazing that happened you know a few weeks ago we all saw what happened 
with mm. Ryan Garcia, mm. right? We all saw that. It, it's not a secret, you know, that there was a little bit of tension there after that f that one fight that dropped out. Yeah. You know, mm. there was a little bit of tension. He kind of lashed out in a way, you know, because his promoter. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, some people took that like, wow, that's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this, and this is what I was telling everybody around me. He could do that. He has leverage, yeah. Because he has, what, 4 million followers? Yeah. You know, he's built a name for himself. He's mm -hmm. worked hard. And, and, and then, or he's associated himself with the right people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And... He, he had that leverage to do that. Anybody else would have done that, poof, the yeah. next day they would have mm -hmm. they been off yeah. the map. Mm -hmm. No one w no one would have ever heard of him ever again. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's why, um, you know, that Logan Paul fight to me is, is just what I kept telling kids prior to that. Like, build yourself up. You mm -hmm. know, be careful what you put on social media. Build your brand. Work hard. Go out. Talk to people. doesn't matter how great you are. You could be a great fighter, but if people don't follow you, if people don't see you, it, you have no nothing, mm -hmm. you know? But you could be you could be a whack fighter, but if people love you or you got a following, you're still going to, you know, mm -hmm. you're going you're gonna to do good as yeah. far as, you know, financially. It just depends what you're, what you're into the boxing yeah, yeah. for, financial reasons or to build, you know, some people want to build a name. You know, mm -hmm. it just depends. Would you be on the undercard, Moreno? Huh? Would you be on the undercard of YouTubers? Um, yeah, why not? I mean, like you said, it's it's, it's good publicity, and uh, I mean, I I I, it, I didn't get to see we didn't get to see the fight because we were fighting. That it was day. a good fight. Yeah. yeah, it was a good fight. Uh, it was entertaining. I was, impre I was impressed <laughs> with the skill set or just the entertainment value. I'm surprised it. they went six rounds. <laughs> first of all. <laughs> so and I, I, heard they it was knew, I, I heard just it saw was the highlights. It was. was they right? had drama. Oh, and yeah. I was more impressed that they n actually knew how to defend themselves. <laughs> no, yeah. No, for real. Yeah, yeah well, I, we fought that same night, so we didn't get to watch it. But, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they both got to experience what what a boxer's life really is. And mm -hmm. they, yeah. I, they they talked about that topic, mm -hmm. that they done something they never done before, and it was crazy for them. But, but I like, like you said, the business side of it, it was a genius idea. And... I, I think it's good. It was good for boxing because <coughs> a lot of little little kids that watch YouTube, they, they they're gonna want to get you mm -hmm. know yeah, you know, they're gonna want to start yeah. watching boxing and really support it. You know, like, oh mom, I want to go see this yeah. fight or just yeah. watch this fight. You know, things That'll like that. So they I put more people in Staples Center than Errol Spence and Sean Porter. Yeah, say that much. I guess they got uh, more hits as well, uh, like on Google search <laughs> and stuff. That's true. Mm -hmm. The streaming and all that, yeah. That's what I I'm mean, saying. they only got like 20 million followers. Uh, uh, he's got like what 18 million, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, but me, something I, I said on a previous podcast is they kind of showed how important it is to be entertaining and, you know, to, to again, with the branding, with the, you know, we just had calls, like, earlier, like, and he's one of those those boxers that gets that they have to be entertaining, they have to, you know, take on some character traits and just sell yourself. And, and he stood know. out. Well, yeah. He was on the, what, Canelo undercard, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then there was an MMA fight going on that night, too, so yeah. a lot of people were watching that and everything was about Canelo and Kovalev and then we're sitting here talking about Cobbs yeah hmm. he's, he was entertaining yeah, yeah. he's yeah. an entertaining fighter just you know, he is. yeah he got dropped I think we we, we talked about that yeah. and that makes him also a little bit more like one you don't one know one what's gonna one happen way. type yeah. yeah yeah how do you guys feel about that that uh that time delay for that Canelo Kovalev but there was like an hour wait and they stopped because they're trying to get you know more subscribers off that MMA fight how do you guys feel about that uh I mean, I was chilling because I watched that MMA fight. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, as a fighter, pff, I know how that feels, man. I know, <laughs> I've seen the pictures of them both laid out with their eyes closed on the couch. They warmed up like three times. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's a, I know I've been, I've been there that's because, crazy. like, um, when, when we fight at the <laughs> sports arena, I'm the last fight. Mm. And, like, I, I, I clock in at, what, like, 4, 4, 4, 4.30. Okay. And then we don't end up leaving until, like, 11, 11.30 mm -hmm. at night. And I'm just there that whole time just sitting down waiting, you know. It's, mm. it's a bit frustrating and because you, you have all these, like, you have this urge. You just want to go out and fight already. And it's kind of like you got to bring yourself up, bring it down, bring it up, bring it down. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I think that it's tough, as you know, for the boxers or for Canelo to have gone through that or anybody to be in that situation, like you said. But... But to, to me, I think that that should just be a wake-up call and let us know where we're at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it should be, it should motivate us to say, hey, man, we got to do something about the sport. Like I said, you know, we got to change it. You know, obviously that happened for a reason. That's giving us a message. Mm -hmm. And the message is that, you know, there's a lot more people right now that 
are interested in in watching MMA because some people have started to lose faith in in boxing, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why uh, as far as Red Boxing Promotion, we're you know we want to bring that change. We mm -hmm. want to be we want to make that difference, you know, mm -hmm. because that's how important change is right now to the sports, mm -hmm. because you know that wouldn't have happened if you know boxing would would be on a different level right now. You know, but obviously with so much so, so so much drama going on sometimes, so many things that happen in the sport, you know, people kind of get turned off by it, mm -hmm. you know. But but I think there is a lot of good things that are happening right now that are, are bringing, you know, boxing uh, back and the energies back. The heavyweight divisions right now are amazing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That Andy Reese, you know, uh, uh, that, 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 that win that he, that he had that was – basically to a lot of people was impossible not yeah. to us we were there watching the fight and we, we mm -hmm. believed the whole time we we're like he's gonna, nice. knock him out, he's gonna knock him out but you know i mean the bets themselves told you how much you know they had how much faith they had in, in that fight yeah. but stuff like that is is what we need to see more of that upsets yeah. you know real people coming out to fight and and you know it's uh, not just you know not just a uh, hollywood script or what people want to see mm. you know but but the real the real deal What's you guys' prediction for that second fight? Same same thing or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah definitely I'm I'm sticking with my boy Andy yeah. Reese. You think by knockout? Um, I think so. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I mean he already got a a taste of Anthony. I mean Anthony Joshua can't really he can't really change much uh, on his on his like plan because I mean he's a taller guy. All he's gonna do is stay on the outside, after, especially after getting knocked down like that. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna go heads up with him for sure. Mm. So you know, Andy, I already know that they they know that Anthony Joshua can use his distance. Andy's gonna apply the pressure, you know. But I mean, who knows? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be definitely a tough fight. They're both gonna come out, but I think Andy Ruiz has an advantage over the fact that f first of all, the first fight he he really have a whole lot of time to to prepare for that fight, mm -hmm. you know, mentally. You know, what I mean, maybe I know he stayed in the gym and he was ready. That's why he was able to take it on. But you know, it's a t totally different place where he's at now where he knows months in advance and then you can see also the change in his body the work yeah. the work he's done to himself you know he's put on uh he's, he's lost a lot of fat and put on a lot of muscle mm -hmm. you know so he has the advantage he's gonna come in with you know he's like man if i if i took him out when you know short notice, at, yeah. short notice and and without being in the shape that i am now like it's gonna be a and that at the end of the day that confidence level is what's gonna be the difference you know mentally joshua's gonna come in there like man this is dude that knocked me out yeah you know this like is the guy so mental mental yeah thing, mental yeah. you know so obviously yeah. you know i'm sticking with my boy andy reese and, <laughs> and uh, well, what's crazy is I, I look back at a pic that a before <coughs> and after picture from that night of the fight i didn't know he was that big because yeah. now I see him, like, or he looks, you know, normal. Yeah. But damn, that dude was big, man. <laughs> yeah. He was like, <sighs> damn, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the picture of him and um, Valdez. Like, back in the day picture where they were, like, bald and, like. Oh, him and, and Oscar Valdez? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nah. mm -hmm. And so a lot of people were like, man, if, you know, them looking normal. I see, and now they're, like, champions. It's like, I guess a lot of people get motivation off of that. Like, yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, but there's another heavyweight match this, this weekend. I'm excited for that one. Yeah? I'm excited for that one because. That fight, I, I don't know, man. I think the judge, uh, not the judges, I think the referee helped Wilder win mm. that fight because um, when Ortiz had hurt him, mm -hmm. um, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, for some reason, <laughs> he blocked. <laughs> for some reason, the referee stopped and gave him, um, uh, what's his name, um, Wilder, Wilder time to to get himself together yeah. again. But had he not, I think, um, what's his name, would have finished him Ortiz, off right there, yeah. you know? Yeah, because he had him hurt. So he did have him hurt. Serious, seriously hurt. That, that when I see it now, I was like, oh man, what the heck? Yeah. So I don't know. I It'll think be a good fight. Be a good fight. Yeah, yeah that was gonna be a good fight. Who else is fighting? Um, Leo uh, Santa Cruz. Is Leo, Santa oh, Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz, Leo yeah. Santa Cruz too. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to fight, but I know that f they were supposed to fight in February. Mm -hmm. And but I know that the guy had got hurt. Yeah. So they he came back. And yeah. So what's the prediction for Wilder Ortiz though? Same thing. Nah. Different outcome. I have uh, Ortiz. Ortiz. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Ortiz is gonna pull this off. Okay. You know, like I said, we need we need more of these in the game. You more know, upsets. In the sport. We need upsets. We need people to believe that. Yeah. You know what? You can. You can yeah. win if you put in the hard work and the sacrifice. You know. Yeah. So it's gonna be tough. It's gonna yeah. be tough. But. Yep. Yeah, the heavyweight division, it seemed like for a minute it was like Joshua, Wilder, uh, and Fury that were just a little bit ahead of the yeah. rest of the, the the heavyweights. But we saw Joshua get upset. We saw uh, Wilder had like a 
a tough outing, you know. Yep. And so, and Tamén Estefier with his last Fury. opponent was a little bit tougher than expected. And so, it, I mean, it just shows, like, it's th the, the disparity is not as great as, you know, people thought. And so, I mean, yeah, yeah never yeah, know. Crazy. You never know what the heavyweight division. Yeah, you? Know. Yeah. Who do you have? Well, Wilder's going to win. You think Wilder's going to win? Yeah. Yeah? That was Ortiz's chance. <laughs> and like you said, the referee blocked him. So, <laughs> no, I don't think. I think he's too old. Hmm. Yeah. I yeah. hope he wins. I hope Ortiz I mean, wins. I don't like Wilder. No. But I think he's going to win. I like Wilder because that dude's natural. You know, he's just a natural animal. But, I mean, everybody knows just to expect that right hand. Yeah. yeah. He just put his hand out and then boom, and he got it right there. So. He swung it like a hundred times on Fury <laughs> until he got it. Yeah. You gotta expect that right hand, yeah. and then expect that crazy left hand to come over. That's it. The windmill, yeah, comes? man. Yeah, Dude, the way he knocked the Brazil though. Dang. Oh yeah, that shit was. Yeah. Savage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. dude just folds it. Like. Yeah. It's crazy because when we have boxers come on, like we we we, we sometimes we notice that. Cause since they're so engulfed in boxing, they're not really boxing fans. But I can feel, I see that like, you you are like a, a fan of boxing, so you do follow. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, I get nervous when I watch them fight. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do for some <laughs> reason. Especially if I know them. You know, oh, okay. Like, if I know them, I get like, oh mm. damn, you know, mm. damn. But no, nah, boxing is fun. You know, it's 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 a cool sport to watch. It's How crazy. often do you watch your fights? Um, I study them. I study them, and and I'm kind of try to see like every fight. If I'm progressing or if I'm going down, you know, so mm -hmm. um, I watch my fights. Um, I watch my fights a lot. Mm -hmm. I do just yeah. to study and when, especially when I'm getting ready for another fight, I see what I did in the last fight, what I could do better mm -hmm. or the mistakes that I made that I shouldn't do again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do, do you listen to the commentary? Do you like because I, I, I saw your highlights and I saw the commentary from the, the Costa Rican the announcer. And he was like, oh, like he was giving you a lot of good. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I I was listening to that. It was pretty funny mm -hmm. too. And what do you say? El chin, el chino, sus ojos what? Tiene los ojos rajados y se lo van a rajar más. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, but he was it, it was it was uh <coughs> it was funny because from the beginning of the fight he just hit him with a jab. Mm -hmm. He hit his opponent with a jab and he's like yeah. He's like, you can just tell the way he let that jab go. He's like, he's like, you better not go get any water, any coffee, or anything. Yeah. He's like because this fight may be over soon. Mm -hmm. You know, they just saw yeah. that he was gonna bring it. His yeah. head went flying. I, I was, I was surprised that shit. <laughs> Man, but um, yeah. yeah, they they showed a lot of love. Like, even yeah. like, like I said, we didn't know what to expect. You know, sometimes, you know, you're the outsider, and, and, and you know, there's uh, the thing in Costa Rica. Soccer is big in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Big. That's like yeah. the big thing, you know. And you know, there's there's that rivalry between Mexico and Costa Rica. Yeah. Big, 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 big. Mm -hmm. So. We were like, well, we'll see. We'll see how people will receive them and, yeah. and what kind of, you know. But it, it, it was all love. It's been yeah. all love, and, you know, we're definitely excited about going back. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I did see is that I think I ran into the channel that broadcasted the fight, and they showed the clip of, of the lady boxer warming up with you um, in the dressing room, and you guys had the mariachi in the background, and a lot of people in the comments were yeah, kind right. of talking shit a little bit, like, why the fuck yeah. did she? Because I guess they thought she had the mariachi. Right. They're yeah. like, why ah, is she okay. sell out? Yeah. She's in Costa Rica, and she has a mariachi. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and saw I that commented too. on it. Like, yeah. Yo, I try to, Mexican, I try to clear it up, but then look, I try to clear it up, right? Because it, it, it seems like, it. like yeah. some people thought that she was coming out with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were saying, well, let, you know, let the Mexicans support her then. You know what I mean? Yeah, so something. somebody makes some, a negative comment like that, right? But I know that comes from the sports thing. Because no, like the, you said, Mexico, Costa Rica, soccer. Yeah. No, but th this is my take on it. Because I thought it was just a misunderstanding. I tried to clear it up. And then they were like, that's stupid. And then we explained and they came back. They're still stupid. Wow. So then I realized this. Oh. I said, you know what? I said, first of all. Um, you know, this person is not speaking for everybody because mm -hmm. the majority should have seen the crowd. I got a video of the whole crowd lit up, right? They okay. were excited. But you will always find trolls on, on, oh, yeah. on yeah, social media. I don't media. think they mean always. it. They don't I think if they're sitting right there next to you, they're like, <laughs> yeah. low-key, hey, that shit. I would love that. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's, there's people that are out there bitter. They're, they're sad. They have yeah. nothing going for them. They're going to talk They're gonna talk trash, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's always like that. Uh, they... They just always want to look at the negative side of something instead of looking at, at the positive or the good mm -hmm. side of it, you know? And it's always the minority of it. It's a small group of people that are doing that. Yeah. You know, we've had experiences where we've done some amazing things with red boxing. Yeah. And then it's just a few things that, you know, that maybe didn't come out as we planned or weren't right. And then people are going to focus on that. 
Mm-hmm. And then there's always the people that weren't even there, the people that don't, that don't know what's happening mm-hmm. that are going to make the comments, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, know, how do you deal with, like, negative comments or when someone, like, you know, leaves that kind of, those messages behind? Uh, I mean, yeah. Sometimes I get pissed, you know, but. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> how many phones have you broken? For real. <laughs> <laughs> nah, sometimes I just get, like, I understand. I understand there's always going to be trolls, but. Sometimes it's just people that don't stop. It's like, mm. damn, dude, like, what's your address? I'll go to your house right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. I ain't playing. <laughs> yeah, bro. But the thing is this. This is this is what I, I think. Because, you know, honestly, um, you know, I do see, like, sometimes I, I catch fighters that, that you know, someone was respond something stupid or negative or something that's really, like, uncalled mm-hmm. for. And then they'll get it into a conversation, and then they'll start saying dumb, dumb stuff also. And and to me, I'm like, man, you just reduce yourself to that level. And at the end of the day, you don't look so you know so smart. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you like I tell him, let all that stuff go. You know, mm-hmm. in reality, a lot of that, you know, a lot of those those haters that that come and and say that stuff is because most of their life is in a bad situation. Mm-hmm. They they really got nothing going, so they're trying to pick on somebody. Mm-hmm. And then. But it puts you at their level when you start doing that, mm-hmm. you know. And I see other people that I see remarks, they never say anything bad, you know. And I, I think that's the smartest thing to do. I think that that a lot of, you know, for a lot of boxes out there, you know, or people who are, are out there, you know what, don't take that personal, mm-hmm. you know. it's You got to take the good and the bad. And people are going to say bad things, you know what. Uh, me, what I tell, like, I tell my boy and I tell everybody else, when they do that, you know <coughs> what, just prove them wrong, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes the, the the greatest revenge is to not say anything, stay quiet, and then, you know, put people wrong. Mm. You know? Yeah. That's how it is. You're yeah. never as good as good as they say you are. You're never as bad as they say you are. No. Yeah. Mm. All right. Another mm. question: as as more wins start start coming, more fame starts coming. How do you how do you keep uh, Angel grounded? You know, it's gonna be a lot of attention that will come. You know, so how do you how do you keep him grounded? Or what advice do you give him? You know what? Um, the advice that I that I, I give them is always to always stay humble, mm-hmm. you know, because you could have it you could have it all right now and you could lose it tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And and the thing the the good thing that I see about him is that that you know he's naturally like that, mm-hmm. you know he, he he has a natural humbleness in him, like you know he he connects well with people. He's always looking to help and to you know he he has that attitude like I want to help people and mm-hmm. I I want to do it so. So I don't think there's gonna be too much of a danger in there because it's, it's natural. Okay. You know what I mean? So I don't think I don't think that as he starts to to, to grow and get to a higher level that it's gonna it's gonna change him into you know. Uh, I think I keep him grounded by by showing him too that, you know, um, you always gotta appreciate everything in life. You can't take anything for granted. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. So. Yeah. So we're all 19 once. Do you let him date or is he allowed to go out? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, you know, after 18, you're an adult. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, all, I, all I could do is, um, what I tell them is, look, you're going to live the consequences of your decision. If you make good decisions, you're going to have, you know, good things come to mm-hmm. you. If you make bad decisions, you're going to live those consequences also. Mm. So all I can do is, is give, them, give them advice, you know, I, and that's what I do, like, you know, I tell them, this is good for you, this is not good for you. Sometimes, I mean, obviously at 19, it's hard. It's hard. And I've been there. I mm-hmm. know because I've been yeah. there, you know. But um, sometimes it's hard to to believe someone. It's hard to take that. Mm-hmm. You got to live it. You got to experiment. It, and then, you know, then you realize, okay, now I know why he or she was telling me this, you mm-hmm. know. So, you know, all I can do is, is give them advice. And sometimes, though, um, you got to live and you got to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, I... I'm going to tell you this through my experience. Before he went into boxing, I was a very strict <coughs> father, mm. very strict. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him talk to certain people. Or, you know, he couldn't go nowhere. You know, I, I watched what he was uh, – I, I wouldn't allow him to watch just anything. Mm. You know, sometimes he didn't, he didn't play video games when he was younger, you know, because mm. I thought that would take away from him wanting to go out and play ball. And in that time that for practice, mm-hmm. instead of sitting in front of a television, you know what, you could use that to better your skill. Yeah. So I was really strict as a parent. And then when that happened to him, when he went through that, through that episode in his life, I kind of realized, like, you know what, I did all of that because I wanted to protect him from this. And yeah. it still, I wasn't still, I still wasn't able to protect him from that. Mm-hmm. So, you know what, sometimes in life, I mean, some people will take that and learn from that. 
but some people have to go through certain things to learn from it. Mm. And I think that was a big learning lesson for him. And that that um, experience also made him part of who he is today and why he's so passionate about helping other young kids. And, you know, so in a way, it kind of it kind of worked out. Mm -hmm. So I think that the things that you live through in life, you know, um, they help you. And, you know, as a parent, you don't want to see your kid go through that, yeah. you know, but you know, whether it's a good thing, you're going to see the rewards. If it's a bad thing, you know, you're going to you're going to learn from it. Mm -hmm. you know? I, like I told the kids um, last night in our mentorship class, you know, where failure is, it's not the end. It's a learning lesson in reality, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not how you start. It's how you finish. So, mm -hmm. you know, nice. The reason I asked that question is because uh, we met Virgil Ortiz and his father and he, he has like a no like a no nonsense, no dating rule where he has him, you know, just focused on boxing and it's a 24 it's seven yeah and but but virgil really respects his father and he like yeah. understands that this is man i need to hook up with his dad <laughs> 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 nah, he's a beast virgil's a beast yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a beast. monster mm -hmm. i need to take notes from his dad <laughs> <laughs> now you know what um the reality is this and this is what i told him like i tell him like you know when you start dating it becomes a major distraction mm. you know it does and and i you know like i like I like to be open up front, yeah. you know, and I, I've seen him train through his, through his moments where he's focused and there's like, no, no girls, no girls in my mm -hmm. life. And then I've seen him train through where there, you know, he, mm -hmm. he has a girl in his life and, and it's not the same, mm -hmm. you know, he can tell me it's the same, but I know it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you, he would lie to himself because, mm -hmm. you know, your energy is, is, is being directed in another, in another mm -hmm. way. And then sometimes you know, you don't want to put that extra hour because I, I got to go. I got to go on a date. I got to go do this. I got to please my girl. I don't want to lose her. You know, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes very different. You know, it's like you're, you, you try to divide your time and mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think with, it, with what his dad uh, told me and uh, our other friend, Lily, shout out to Chicana Boxing. It's like you only have this window of time where, where the boxing career is short. Yeah. You know, 10, 15, whatever time. And so it's like got to dedicate that time. Yeah. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you know, things come and go, but like you only have that window of time to, to do this career. Absolutely, yeah. I, I believe the same thing, but you know, you're also, at, at 19 year old, you got a thousand hormones going through your body, <laughs> you got some testosterone at, at the highest level, you know? It's hard, it's yeah. gonna be hard, yeah. you know? So, so definitely my mm -hmm. advice would be like, hey, you know what, I would have a no dating policy also, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But but the thing is She's this, like, uh. yeah, no, <laughs> but, but the reality is that, yeah. you know, that's I individual choice, yeah, choice yeah. you know? That's crazy though. Like I don't know. That is that's that's crazy. <laughs> 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 he got real. He got quite real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, his whole mood changed. Why did I agree to this? <laughs> <fucking podcast? laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> so that was the real reason why we brought you here. He's like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That was really concerned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> That's like the intervention post is gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> come in, guys. Come in. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, something. Um, I think I think I w we talked about this. Uh, we we're talking about Ryan Garcia, and he's very talented. You know, he's got like the world at his feet. Yeah. I think I mentioned it with these guys. I was like, oh, I think the only thing that could really like derail him is like the stuff that goes out that happens outside of the ring. Yeah. If he gets distracted or something, you know, yeah. happens out on that road on, on that side. And, yeah. you know, we're men. Um, we all have that side. So it's just like yeah. how much do you let that distract you, I think. And I think that's going to be one of Ryan's things, how yeah. his career, yeah, you know, yeah. he's already started. To, he's already started to affect him a little bit, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and it's because when you have drama going on in your life, it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to focus, you know, everything on mm -hmm. what you're doing, you know. So, yeah, definitely – you know, but going team 15 years in a career with, without dating, too, I kind of understand. Like, yeah, you know. Mike Tyson right there. <laughs> <laughs> I had sex with my wife in five years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that's why he would go in there and kill them opponents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bite some ear yeah, off. He'll be like, you're, you're the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. I saw, like, a clip of Nikita Bobby. I don't know if you guys have heard of White Chocolate. I, th uh, I think yeah, I, I think, think he, so. he like withheld. I think he's like, man, I haven't had sex in like two weeks. Like I'm gonna take it out on this guy and then, like, go and celebrate after. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, two so weeks? That's two weeks. I wonder if it really <laughs> works like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, two weeks? Oh man, what two a sacrifice! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not enough. <laughs> no, no way. Yeah, but, but yeah. no, it, it does make a difference. Mm. It, you feel like an animal, dude. Like it's crazy. 
you know, it, but it also, I guess it also has something to do also with what you're driving, your passion, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It has a lot to do with that because when the, the higher your passion, the higher you drive, the more you're willing to sacrifice, yeah. you know? <coughs> like right now, I have a 15-year-old son too that, that's coming up and he's an amateur fighter, mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's really good too. He, he basically trains with him, so he's training as a professional already. He's only an amateur, El Morenito. El Morenito. El Morenito. Okay. And um, right now, fighting amateur, he's, he has knockout power already, knocking okay. kids out of amateurs and stuff. You know, but uh, I talk to him about girls, you know, hmm. because the same thing, because it, it's a struggle. I, I know it's a struggle for them, and I'm like, hey, you know, I try to give them the advice about, it. look, this is what you need to look for in a woman when you're getting ready to date, because, hmm. you know, I if not, it's going to divert you, it's going to affect you, the mm -hmm. decision you make right now. And his answer to me right now, we just talked about that today, his answer was like, Dad, I don't need no girls in my life right now, my, my girl is boxing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, so, so that's, a, that, right now, he's just in yeah. love with, with that, he, that's his passion, mm -hmm. you know? And it's so easy that, you know, <laughs> that if you do get into a relationship, you could lose your passion for the sport. You can't, you know. I know a lot of good fighters that could have been great, you know, but they're not great now. They're not boxing because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they made some choices that didn't make it easy for them in life, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But that uh, that's, uh, that's where our vision comes in, you know, yeah. the vision, the, the dream, mm -hmm. you know. It's like, you know. I won't let anything stop me mm -hmm. from getting to the dream or yeah. our goal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where I guess where if, pe if boxers have failed in that in that way is because they don't have a vision or a dream. But mm -hmm. it also, you know, some of them could have a vision <coughs> or a dream. But the the reality is is that um, you know some people may not have the support behind them to be able to continue that vision and that dream. You know, mm -hmm. like I can see. Oh, but if you're talking about the girl aspect, like the because of the women. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. For example, let's say, let's say that um, someone gets into a relationship and they become a father, right? Mm. Um, you know, that's really tough when you have no financial backing, you have nobody behind you. You got to go out there and work. And then yeah. when you start working, you ain't going to have the same strength to go out there and train and, and dedication. Yeah. You know, and I see a lot of fighters like that. I see a lot of fighters that were great at one point. Right now, they're just, you know, sometimes they do boxes for a paycheck. Mm. They fight just because they, they, they mm. need some money, Weekend you know? Job. And they could have been, they could have been great fighters, but... The reality is they made it, they made a decision, you know, that brought some consequences and, and that kind of pushed them into, you know, basically having to choose whether they're going to continue their career or they're going to feed some kids and bring some diapers home. Yeah. You know, it's easy to say, you know, to stay, I'm going to keep on going w w in my dream when you have people behind you or, you know, financially you can do that. Mm -hmm. But when you, you can't, a lot of people, you know, I've talked to a lot of kids or, or mm -hmm. a lot of fighters that are like, man, you know, I had a future, but, you know, I end up getting married. Yeah, and that, that was it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you look at La Cobra, yeah, she's a full time mother of she three is. three kids. She mm -hmm. got a full time job. Mm -hmm. she absolutely, you know? absolutely. That you know that that shows you that there really is no excuses. Mm. But the reality is this: that how many people can be a Cobra? That's, yeah. that's a special yeah. type of person right there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because. You know, and then another thing, she's a woman. <laughs> she's more, you know, women have, w believe it or not, women <laughs> have more stamina. You know, um, I, 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 I believe that there is a difference between a man and a woman. Sometimes women could be a lot stronger than a man. And yeah. uh, you know, just let a man catch a cold and you're going to see the difference. <laughs> that, you know, he, he, he wants to go to the ER, you know, yeah. let a woman catch a cold. She's still out there putting in work yeah. and taking care of the kids, doing what she has to do, exactly. you know, but. Um, mentally, she she's you know Cobra you know my hats off to her you know for for that dedication. But uh, and there I'm sure there there's people that have gone through adversity also fighters that have gone through adversity mm -hmm. and they overcame it. I mean you know stories of someone who got shot and they didn't let that you know there's people boxers who told you'll never walk again and they mm -hmm. went back into the ring. Those are amazing stories though. But how many how many people can do that? Yeah, yeah. That's why they're amazing stories. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, th I, I believe there is no excuse if you really determined, but. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it, not everybody can can go through that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, you're talking about stories, and we're um, we're on the phone with Blair Cobb earlier, and I know you know a little bit about his background, mm -hmm. right? Um, you don't know much. Right? I don't know much. I'm trying no to no. fill you in on that. So basically, um, his dad was on the FBI FBI's most wanted list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drug dealer. Um, the the family escaped to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Right. They escaped uh, in 2004. Um, allegedly, they f they uh, <coughs> his dad, I guess he dropped off the plane, something like that. You guys could look it up. Mm -hmm. But uh, the plane was found with um, 
525 pounds of cocaine. Damn, Damn that's like five. Holy mm-hmm. shit. $24 million. <laughs> right? So they were on the run. And that's why he, you know, he 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 lived a portion of his life in Guadalajara. Mm-hmm. Basically because they were on the run. They were on the run, yeah. Yeah, just to put that into perspective. Um, a lot of people don't get to hear these stories. Yeah. 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 And see, that's so. what the amazing thing about about this kid is that um, he could have used that to be an excuse to, you know, continue, you know, that same pattern <coughs> and be like, you know what? It My dad did. Yeah, he did some bad decisions and look where how we got to live. And then that's the end of, you know, but but that's what I'm saying. These are amazing stories for a reason because they mm-hmm. were people are able to overcome what other people wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. You know, most people would just say, you know what? I mean, my dad's in jail. I got to eat. I'm going to go rob. I'm going to go steal. I'm going to go sell drugs. I got to find a way to make a <coughs> living. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, this kid turned turn the whole story around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He he basically, he knew what he wanted. He's worked hard for it. You know, nobody's given him anything. He's earned it. That's why he's an amazing story, you know? And, and definitely, I'm sure there's a lot of kids out there that need opportunities like that. You know, yeah. that they, they're waiting for an opportunity. But, you know, don't don't allow your circumstance to determine what your future is. Yeah, you know? and, even, and he even talked about that. He's like, it's not really a topic that I like to discuss or even like to even mention at all. He said, it's like my new life, new chapter. I'm trying to recreate, you know. You know what? That's, that's you know, because I guess he doesn't want to make it a focus about that, yeah. you know, because then people get stuck there. But I, I would say, like, if he was listening to me right now, I would just say, listen, you got a story that you can inspire people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's true. That, that you shouldn't hide that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you you could take that story and inspire a kid that's coming up right now that his ki- his dad is locked up and he's thinking, you know what, I'm going to go gangbang. I'm going to go on the streets. I'm going to go sell drugs. I'm going to, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to go hustle to survive or do what I, I got to do. When they hear your story, they may get inspired by that. Yeah. You know, you might give somebody a light and change their mentality. So... I would just say don't hide that. You know what I'm saying? I know it's maybe something you don't want to be proud of. That's why sometimes people want to yeah. put it away. You know, it's not something you want to be proud of, you know. But but then again, there's, I say this. There's always a reason why you went to that. There's a bigger purpose yeah. in the long run, you know. So use it. Use it to, to make the world a better place. Nice. Yeah. Nice. We're an hour 30 in. We got to wrap it up pretty soon, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah, so anything, shout outs, where can we find you, any upcoming events, all that stuff. Go ahead. Um, well, we do have the uh, the fight coming up in December. Uh, we have the the food drive November twenty seventh. Twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. That's right. Twenty eighth. Oh yeah, that's right in the morning. Um, you know, shout out to Janae. Hey. Always being on top of her game. <laughs> she she put this uh, together. Nice. For us. Shout out so. to all the sponsors that that have supported in Moreno. You know that are always there. I don't know if you want to give them. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, here. Let's get that on video real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it on video right here. Hey. Yep. Um, so shout out to all my sponsors um, for always believing in me and and helping me. And um, you know, uh, I want to thank uh, Ruben. I want to thank uh, Delta Ruben Delta Group. Um, I want to <coughs> thank East Laos. I want to thank Chef Tunes. You know, Chef Tunes has been hooking me up with the meals. Um, I want to thank um, First Law Group, Maria. I want to thank um, MVP, Dr. Medicine. I want to thank um, DS Promotion. And uh, I want to thank uh, Tigre Grande Music. Um, I believe that is it. Right? IET. IET. We have a lot of sponsors. We have a lot of people. Yeah, many Definitely. Yeah, you Shout been out pretty to good, man. How do yeah. you remember all them names? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would have been lost in the uh, third one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, MP Auto Wash. Them guys, them guys get down with the pipe. Yeah, nice. yeah, man, we got a few sponsors. That's we, we have a good group behind us. Yeah. Thank you guys. Where can we find you? Um, you guys can find me on um, Instagram at El Moreno Boxing. Uh, yep. And Facebook. Nice. Angel Rodriguez. Stay tuned. Where can we find Red Boxing, Mr. Bar- Marvin? You can find me at Marvin Rodriguez Inc. on Instagram. Marvin Rodriguez Inc. Nice. Yeah, and you can follow us to our, our, our promotion uh, page is Red uh, Official Red Boxing. Yeah. Official Red Boxing. Um, look us up. And that's where you can find us. Nice. Yeah, man. You got any last shout-outs, Chris? No, all good. Final question. Um, 
what's a dream venue or a dream, dream city that you would want to fight in Moreno? Uh, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Dubai, man. <laughs> 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 Saudi Arabia. He's coming in a camel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Um, hey, man, when we see I it happen. It <laughs> I, I think the Staples Center is something that would be huge okay. because, you know, that's home. Of course, hell yeah. Everybody always wants to fight at home. Yeah. That's a privilege. That's true. Everybody doesn't get that opportunity, but I think the Staples Center would be definitely one place. Nice. You know, uh, you know, maybe a venue out in, in a big venue out in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know where, where where the roots are from and the family are from. Nice. You know, but but yeah, definitely those those two, and then you know anywhere where the door is open. You know, mm-hmm. definitely. Nice. Dope. I want to send a quick last shout out to Right Hook Roxy. We had her on our last episode. Um, I was able to make it to her fundraiser this past weekend. It was pretty cool. Nice. Had good music, good good uh food. All that stuff. It was fun. Nice. Yeah. That shout is. out to them. Right Hook Roxy. Hey. Shout out to uh, Blair. Uh, Blair, the Flair Cobbs as well. Try to, we're trying to get him in the studio whenever he's in LA. So shout out to him for answering our phone call. Hey. Yeah. yeah, and they can follow us at Against the Ropes, D A Ropes underscore now, and Against T H E Ropes dot online. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for coming. It was a pleasure. We got to have you guys back. There's yeah. still a lot of stuff that we got to touch on. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yeah. We're we'll definitely good. gonna. Be keeping up with you, Moreno, and see some more of those fights. Rack up more Ws, man. And yeah. It no, I appreciate you guys for having me. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's cool. An hour and 30, it went by pretty cool. It went by pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know we put you up against the ropes a little bit with the girlfriend questions and stuff. <laughs> 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 he got days. He got days. <laughs> he took a knee. He took a knee. I saw, I saw the legs wobble a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <funny. laughs> oh, that, that was my biggest opponent right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was my toughest opponent right there. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. yeah, yeah man. Again, thanks for having you guys. This is you guys at home. You guys are always Appreciate welcome it. back. Yeah. And so, yeah, dude, like, f- you guys feel free to message us whenever. Thank you. Honestly, any guys, uh, we'll try to make it to your, you know, the fundraiser or anything. You guys have messages, and we'll see what we we'll get support. January, uh, we're shooting for January 20, 25th for our next show. Hey. So, you know, if you guys, we would love to have you guys there present. Dope, dope, dope. Yes, All sir. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Against the Ropes, episode 62, 63, something like something that, like right? That. We're out. See you next week. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Against the Ropes. You know what mine mine is? Let's box bitches. It's almost fight night. Shout out to Against the Ropes. Thank you for the support. Keep doing your thing. You're doing you're doing a great job. So thank you and best wishes. Huge, huge shout out to Against the Ropes, Against the Ropes. Shout out to Against the Ropes. Thank you guys for uh, the interview and uh, hope to see you again very soon. Against the Ropes, always doing the right thing. Uh, shout out to Against the Ropes, man. I appreciate you guys for having me, taking the time on y'all day. Against the Ropes, number one. Freddie Roach. Thank you very much.